be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Dennis Gebhardt here for Guru Nation, and it is time for another episode of Rabbit Trails. Uh, today, we have uh, a special guest that we've invited to join us here on the, on the show. Her name is Erica Blancet. I've known Erica now for a few years, and uh, I think she's really got a lot of insight, and I uh, invited her here today so she could share some of her insight as a salon owner and as an educator, things that she sees in the field. So, Erica, welcome to Rabbit Thank Trail. Thank you. Thank you so much. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself so the audience can get a little background? So I'm Erica Blanza, and I have been behind the chair for about 18 years. Before that, I was still in the industry. I was a receptionist for a salon, so I've been in the industry for a little bit. Uh, I'm a studio salon owner and uh, educator for a company and also the Spanish educator here with Guru Nation. So thanks for having me, Dennis. Yes. you. Uh... Hi, Max. Hi. Yeah. Well, you can say buenos dias. Como es oh, buenos dias. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, uh, we are glad to have you today. I think it's going to be fun here on the show. And so, uh, Max, my friend, how are you? I mean, alive and kicking. Are you good? <laughs> yes, good, good, I'm good. Great. How's the weather? I always ask you how That's the weather is. Because I know Actually, it's cold uh, it is here. <laughs> but the sun is out, so that's a plus. Hallelujah. I mean, Thank goodness. Great. Well, um, that's what I love about this time of year. Now the sun comes up early in the morning. I don't need an alarm clock because the sun wakes me up. I am really a daylight guy. I love daylight more than I love dark. So for me, I love getting up with sun and, and coming home when there's still sunlight. I have issues when it's dark at four o'clock in the afternoon. I think we all do. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I'm just glad that we're only a few weeks away from daylight savings time. Now, some of the states uh, here in the U.S., they don't change. So that, that's cool, whatever they wish to do. Um, I wish we stayed on daylight savings time all the time anyway, but... Uh, uh, we're not. So anyway, it's really good because we're getting lots of sunshine. In fact, here in California, um, my wife told me this morning before she left that uh, it would be warm enough this afternoon that we might have lunch out on the patio. Ooh, so nice I'm very excited today. about being on the patio. I'm very excited about getting back to my swing. I have a swing that I bought because when I was a little kid and lived with my grandparents, they, all, they had a swing on their patio, and I loved that swing. I spent hours with my grandma and grand grandpa on that swing. In fact, in the summer times, because it got really hot here, the, the swing had a, the one side of it would lift up and it'd make like a little pillow. And we would sleep in the summertime out on the patio. That's before you had, uh, <laughs> that's before you had uh, um, crazy murdering people. You have to be careful now. You can't even be out in the afternoon. But anyway, I don't know how I got there, but I love my swing. And uh, so that should be fun uh, for us this afternoon. So here's what I love about this episode. Number one is episode number 10. Max, can you believe that we have Double done digits. 10 episodes already? And um, we are so grateful for all of you who've been watching us and for all of you that have been supportive and you've been sharing our programs. Um, we're really, really grateful for that. So those of you that are watching us here on YouTube, we, we want to thank you. Those of you who see us on Instagram or on Facebook or other platforms, social media platforms, thank you so much for your support. As you know, if you first time you viewed our show, uh, our program is about um, talking about issues of the day in the hairdressing business, especially that relate to hair color. Our goal as a company is to help you discover your own personal genius, to help you navigate a pathway of success in the world of hair color. We do that by giving you the facts. We give you scientific, substantiated information that you can depend upon. As you all know, if you ask one question on social media, you may get 23 different answers. And most of that information is either made up of opinions or speculations, and really a very little bit of it is scientifically based. So we try to do that because we truly believe 
the more educated you are about the why, why color works the way it does, the easier it will be for you to execute the how. And uh, for those of you who have followed me, you know that I always say to everyone, don't believe anything I tell you, test it to see if it works for you. Now, the great thing about my two colleagues that are here with me today is that I've had an opportunity to spend time with them over the years, and they have both taken me at my word. They tested what I said to see that it worked for them. And so that's huge. That's a huge endorsement of what we teach. <clears throat> and that is why, you know, we're here together because, you know, they now are being, you know, they're, they're now being followed on social media uh, and their information is being sought out. And so we're really grateful for that. So today's episode is titled Things That Make Me Scratch My Head. <laughs> And right. man, I cannot tell you, I, I must have little blisters on my head from scratching my head so much uh, when I see things on social media. But we're going to kind of address a couple of those. Each one of us uh, is going to kind of share with you things that make us scratch our heads and then kind of give you some feedback on what we think people need to know to help them be more accurate in this part of their craft. Uh, but I wanted to start off today, if you guys are okay with this, with a little bit of uh, interesting current events. Now, here in California, there's a guy named Ryan Seacrest. Most of you who watch American Idol, you know that he is the host of American Idol. Well, R Ryan has a radio show here in the Los Angeles market on KISS FM. And this last week, he had done a survey chatting with hairdressers about things that bother them about clients. Instead of going to the consumer and saying, what bothers you about your hairdresser? He went the opposite direction <laughs> and talked to the hairdresser. <clears throat> and so two of those things that bother them about their, hair, about their clients, uh, I thought we'd chat about that this morning just to kind of see what my colleagues think <laughs> about that information. So guys, here we go. First thing he said is that, Hairdressers don't like it when clients keep their eyes open during the shampoo service. <laughs> okay, now, I need to chime in on this one. Okay. Because I bring something different to this group, being a female. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I can understand this, it, that it bothers them. Um, now that I'm in my studio, I have a shampoo bowl where I shampoo from behind. So it's a stand up from behind shampoo bowl. I don't have this problem anymore, but it is a little strange when you're reaching over someone yes. and their eyeballs are straight at you. And it's a little discomforting. I'm not going to lie. I, I, over the years, I've had a few assistants. They always bring it up too. So it's not, I mean, it doesn't. It's, it's awkward and I can yeah. get used to it, but, right. <laughs> but it's, right. it, it's a thing. I, I would yeah. say it's a thing. You know, I think the backwash has been a godsend for that whole issue because it's made it much easier. And I think for me as a guy, you know, I've never really actually thought about whether their eyes are open or closed, but, but I have done some things that I learned when I worked in Asia is that in Asia, if you're getting a shampoo, what they do is they have these little tissues that are scented that they, and they're adhesive and they lay them across your forehead so that you really can't see, your vision is blocked. And I think that's sort of like a unspoken verbalization of shut your eyes and shut up and let me shampoo your hair. Oh, <laughs> don't think, stare at me. <laughs> but they try to add a little bit of, you know, a little bit of, uh, elevating the service in the salon. Um, but I've never really noticed that except when you're rinsing out a color, right? And I know that their eyes are open. And, what, and we always say to people when we do our classes, we go, look, that client is watching your facial expression. They're watching to see whether or not you are smiling and you're confident with what you're looking at. Or if you... <laughs> go into panic mode and then they'll say they'll recognize that they'll recognize that facial change and they'll say what's wrong and you go oh nothing <laughs> they know you're lying <laughs> so 
Yeah, that's Absolutely. my experience. Max, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's definitely not a very comfortable <coughs> feeling when someone's like staring up at you <laughs> or they're just like staring at the ceiling. That's also kind of weird. You know, like they're like, I've had like the um, almost like completely emotionless, you know, client. That like a cadaver getting a shampoo? Oh, gosh. Yeah, but with, with eyes open, <laughs> not, not a closed eyes <laughs> cadaver. Yeah. Well, I, I think that, that, that there's something that um, bothers hairdressers, some hairdressers. And so we don't ever communicate that unless we're just with our close people that we work with. But right. uh, it's something to think about, you know? So here's the solution, right? Put something over their eyes. It's that easy, you know? <laughs> so, you know, you can get, you know, scented tissue, and just put it over the eyes. I think that would elevate that service. I mean, it gives them that opportunity, you know, to just lean back and relax. That's the thing that's real important. Also, you know, um, I when I tone hair, sometimes I will lay a hot towel around the hairline, and that automatically relaxes someone. They just want to close awesome, their eyes and awesome. calm down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what? I was just thinking about that as well. If something came to my mind as I was saying that you could use that tissue, you know, as your um, as your shampooing. I'm getting them to relax, um, and now it just it went away. It just came into my hard drive and it left. So we'll see if it comes back. But uh, but you know that's the thing. You know they're you have to realize that, that they are, they are watching for facial expressions sometimes. And that's what you've got to be aware of. Oh, I know what it was. It just came back to me when they try to help you when you're lifting their oh. head. <laughs> I just, uh, that one more often than not. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, you know, I have this saying, I say to every client, every time I do their hair, let your head relax and let me do all the lifting. Right. So now I have clients who come to me for like 30 years. They lean back. They look at me. They go, let your head relax and let me do all the lifting. <laughs> and I go, yeah, ditto. Right. Okay. Let's move forward. So craziness. All right. So number two, hairdressers don't like it when clients moan during the shampoo. Uh, this is 100% a thing and I have had it in my chair and um, I don't think people notice that they're doing it to be honest right I just think it's it's something that you do when you relax and you just calm and right but it's very uncomfortable extremely <laughs> being a female and if you have a male in your chair and you're doing a, a guy's cut Right. It's very uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, I can understand that. Uh, I've had clients do that. I've had them, you know, they they get relaxed. And so they go, ah. you know, I don't consider that a moan. but No, it's, you know, <laughs> no there's been moaning. Mm, <laughs> legit moaning. <laughs> so look, here's the positive side of that. We give a good touch. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're, they come to us for the good touch. You know, you go to the doctor, you go, get in there, get your job done and get out. But when they come to the hairdresser, they go, I've been waiting for this part of the service all morning long. They've been waiting for it because it's that time. You know, we know this. Psychologists tell you that human beings respond to touch. You know, when, you know, for all of us who have children, we understood that, you know, Touch was important for a child, especially during the beginning years. And so that's why, oh, I'm really going down a rabbit trail here. We have been 12 months without human beings touching each other. You know what I mean? I mean, we're still able to shampoo, but it's like that touching is not here anymore. And so you kind of wonder what it's going to be like if we go all the way to the end of 2021, which we've been told and not touch each other. I, no joke. I had a client tell me yesterday, I wish I could hug you. I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be very strange, but I thought that was great that they were interviewing hairdressers and getting mm -hmm. our point of view 
about certain things that consumers do that bother us because we wouldn't say to a consumer, hey, look, you know, I'm not happy about you opening your eyes during the shampoo. <laughs> Maybe you wouldn't, Dennis, but I've done <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so Erica, so when they well, start the moaning, do you like grab their ears and start twisting their ears? <laughs> I actually tapped we, someone on the head. You did, I really? actually tapped so somebody on the that. head. And I said, stop that. <laughs> <laughs> there will be an extra I fee. Love it. Oh. I just want to know, like, what if they lay there with their eyes open and they moan? Then what happens? <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, then you probably need to take a break and uh, walk away. Right. Just excuse yourself. <laughs> probably. Probably. Uh, okay, guys, enough uh, humor now. <laughs> let's uh, let's get started into this. So look, that I asked just both a warm of you. Up. I'm yeah. sorry. That was just a warm up. So I asked both of you to come up with a couple of things that make you scratch your head. So let's start with ladies first. Erica, why don't you kind of share with us, uh, you know, the first thing that makes uh, you scratch your head when salon okay. professionals do certain things. Well, uh-oh, here we go. <laughs> okay, Getting ready to fight, right? If I had hoop earrings on, it'd be. It'd be... <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. Okay, so the first thing that drives me absolutely bonkers, and I don't understand, is when people say that double ends are just a level darker than what than what you're using so if i if i needed more gray coverage on a 5n i would use a five double n uh, why who spread the who's spreading these rumors well i think uh, it comes from manufacturers you know i mean they said that for years they said that double n's had more pigment and so more pigment simply meant that they were probably darker and, um, and and so that story got spread. I, only because I made double ends do I know how double ends are normally made. And they're not normally made by taking a four and calling it a five. <laughs> that's yeah. because it's no longer, uh, that's not accurate. That's not accurate building of a color, of a shade of color. Normally, double ends are made by, one, increasing their alkalinity, because we know that resistant gray hair will have a tendency to, to not accept color as successfully. And so sometimes that gray hair is resistant, and it requires what we call pre-softening. And so in order to do that, we have to increase alkalinity, because alkalinity is what softens the hair. And then the second thing is that we know that gray hair contributes no warmth. So we have to increase the alkalinity and we have to add warmth. So if you think about that, then think how that color is built. All colors have background. So background would be brown. And then they also have tone. And so tone in a double N would be warmth, which is normally gold. And then sometimes they have reflect. Double ends don't have any additional reflect. They are normally brown with addition of gold because once you apply that color to the hair, which is gray, that gray is going to replace the missing part of that gold and create a second browning out effect. And that's normally how a double brown is created. So uh, the way I think about it is just the I guess the way they not just the way they build the double ends but the way they build color right you know a level five is a level five is a level five it has to have a certain amount of dye load in it in order to be called a level five you are absolutely right Erica absolutely right and, and that's the reason why you know there's so much misinformation about how these shades are made now I don't doubt that there's possibly a brand of color where they took their fours and called them fives. I, I, because people do crazy stuff in this business. Uh, <clears throat> but I would not, for me, that would be difficult to do because then I couldn't really call it a level five. It would be too dark. And what happens when you make a color like that and you have so much more pigment than what is specified in the level, 
if you're coloring a head of hair where it's a combination, gray and pigmented, that pigmented hair is going to look darker because you've added more pigment to it and you're going to get highs and lows. You're not going to get an even tonal color throughout. See, if you're using a N the way, double N the way I make it, uh, you're going to get balanced tone. And so those things I think are really, really important to think about. But uh, it, we always get into these blanket statements. We say all double N's are, all peroxide is. And I think that's the killer right there. What do you think, Max? I mean, I'm, I'm with you guys 100%. And, you know, just speaking from experience, I think that if you have a really good foundation with how to formulate and with your color line and knowing what's in your color line, you don't usually even need to use a double N. You're you know? so right. Amen, Max. <laughs> I mean, they're yeah. normally kind of created, well, not even kind of, they're created by color manufacturers for either people who are not good at applying hair color, you know, so they're like trying to squeeze right. a little, little more, you know, push the envelope with that bad application by making something that's possibly like a little more pigment dense, right? you know, rich in warmth, et cetera, as opposed to like, you know, back, back in the day working with a hair color line that didn't have a, a double end shade, they taught us, you know, either add a little bit more color, a little less developer in the same level and you'll increase the opacity or even take three quarters of your target shade and then add maybe a quarter of a level deeper to it to kind of create another more pigment dense. But you're still like, if you're at a level six, you're still mostly at a level six, you're adding a little five to it, but you're not taking a five and calling it a six. And right. then, well, well you know, Max, that you... would be marketing too. I mean, that's probably the marketing department, not that's, that's not the people that are building the color in the back. That's right. Right. It. Right. Well, you know, Max, you're old school like I am. It's not hard to believe that you're old school because you are. <laughs> and that's the way we were trained, right? We were trained. Yeah. You need better coverage. What's missing? What this, the, 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 the problem, the challenge is you need more pigment for better coverage. How do you do that? Well, right. here's how you do it. And you just gave two great answers on how to address it without ever using a double N. And I believe that those kinds of families of colors, and I'm sorry, I'll get, fl I'll get flack for this. They create a crutch for hair colorists. And I mean, I cannot tell you how many people Guilty. had when I worked for a company and we brought out double ends, they said, well, I'm just going to, every time it's gray hair, I'm going to use a double end. <clears throat> you know, well, you don't have to do that. You know, every, or every time it's gray hair, I'm going to add more pigment. You don't have to do that. Gray hair is not always resistant, you know, but we build in these belief systems. And I think that's one of the reason people have a big issue with that. So, well, and not to mention yeah. cleansing the hair before we start coloring it, that could help a little bit. It certainly could. Yeah. Jeez. Shocker. <laughs> and you know, here's what we've been hammering this home for years and it still have people who don't do it. You still have people who the client pulls up, <laughs> walks in the salon, dirty hair and all, and they slap color on the head. And then they get upset when they don't get adequate coverage or they get upset because the color slipped and then they want to blame the product. And then you get the question online. What has the best great coverage? Well, I know. Isn't that funny? <laughs> the best great coverage uh... is they all cover gray. But uh, yeah, that that's the whole, they make it brand focused. You know, that's the craziness of it. Well, that was a good one, Erica. Mm. That was wonderful. Max, what do you got? Oh, what don't I got? Now, my probably, for me, the thing that, that makes me scratch my head the most is when I hear, what's the formula? What's the formula for that? Mm -hmm. What are you using? You know, 
And I just want to go, well, what do you see, you know, like with the end result, you know, let's build right. the formula off of what you're visually seeing, because, you know, you can, we all know you can take, you know, a color formula and put it on three different people and you're going to get three different end results. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I think that, uh, I, I, I just laugh when I see that, you know, people asking for a formula. And sometimes, do you know they have, I, I realize sometimes they actually have the client in the chair and they're at the color bar or they're in the dispensary in the back of the salon and they're putting a, a plea, a, 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 you know, a, a rescue, a mayday out on Facebook for a formula. I have seen that. I have seen that. You know, I, and, and then I'm shocked at all the replies that they get with a formula. And they haven't even been able to see the hair. They haven't been able to, to know any of the history. They haven't been able to do any assessment, but they're throwing formulas at each other. And I'm going, all right, well, that's like one person not using their head. And now another person goes, hey, this sounds like fun. Okay, I'll just throw a formula in there. And it doesn't mean anything. And I, I've yet to see someone say, I'm not going to help you. I'm not going to give you a formula, but I will teach you how to formulate. Mm -hmm. You know, you know I, I do put some formulas out um, with my pictures. If they're like something that most people wouldn't think it would be. Right. Just to get wheels turning. And, you know, like yesterday I toned with a, 2-0 and 0 no, it was a 3-0 and an 0 just to give me as much control as I could have. Right. And and that was just in through a color melt that was, you know, zone one. Like that was that was right. where I needed it. And then I used an, like a beige on the rest of it. Right. But that is something that'll get people's wheel turning and be like, why did you do that? That's when I share formulas. Well, I think that's great to do it like that. But I mean, it's don't throw them a, a rescue, you know, a, you know, here's a lifesaver because here's what happens. And I've seen it happen. It's happened to me. Once you give someone a formula, you have taken ownership of the result. I cannot tell you how many times I was doing educational events across this country. Someone would walk up to me as I'm in the back of the classroom and it's dark because someone else is on stage and they grab my hand and they go, you know, I use that red shade formula you gave me when I saw you last year. And my little voice is going, holy crap, what red shade formula did you give her last year? You know, because that's what the next thing is going to be. I'm waiting for her to say, it messed up my client's hair <clears throat> because, you know, that's what happened. I accepted responsibility because I gave her the formula for that red shade. But I think showing people how to manipulate their colors is that's great to get them oh, to think, to be yeah. provocative. And yeah. then I do, I have answered some of those pleas for help. Right. Um, and I've just, and I've just said, there's too many variables here. What's right. the texture of the hair? What is your gray percentage? What's the condition of the hair? What is the goal? Where's your starting point? Like there's just a list of things that I go down. You cannot get an answer without knowing all these things. Right. Right. So craziness. Yeah. So um, that's a good one, Max. You guys yeah. ready for mine? Ready. Hit me. <laughs> yeah. Do the it. first one is it makes me scratch my head when we do education and we give you information about the facts. Okay. Here's what peroxide does. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, here's what color does. It gives, drives me crazy when someone ta tags onto that, that post and they say, well, I don't care what you say, it works for me. And then I go, well, I say, well, okay, good for you. I'm glad it works for you. But I'm telling you, it doesn't matter who you are. This is the way peroxide works. Doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter where you live. Doesn't matter what what part of the world you live in, it doesn't matter what ethnicity you are, this is what peroxide does on everything. 
So when you say to me, well, it works for me, my question back to you would be, where's your bar set? Where's your bar set? What is your degree of acceptability? Is your bar set like a, a high jump? Is your bar set like a pole vault? Or is your, bar set, is your bar set like a limbo? You know, wherever your bar is set, what you accept as being an acceptable result, that's the only thing I could relate to that would someone would say to me, well, even what you tell me, even though it's scientifically proven, there's what works for me. I'm going to continue doing this, even though you recommend that I don't, because it works for me. Like you have special gifts. Honestly, you have to examine what are you accepting as being the great result. You, those guys, were, you were here last week. We played you a voice over of someone who said they prepare themselves to accept a result that may not be what they set out to achieve. How do you do that? How do you accept you prepare yourself for failure? Why would you do that? So that really makes me scratch my head. Well, and not to mention, like, why are you here? <laughs> if, why, why are you here at an educational event? If, if you just want to argue with me, cool. Because... Right. <laughs> uh, what do you think, Max? I mean... <laughs> have no words other than <laughs> why i know i i just i i i mean i am open if someone wants to tell me why <laughs> that, you know right. when if you want to tell me why i mean because it's 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 actually I'm at a loss for words, and I don't. I am not often at a loss for words, but it just that really does make me scratch my head. I think as educators too, it's kind of like with that point that you want you just hey, bite your tongue because your magical pixie dust isn't going to work for everyone else. So for everyone else, right, right, this is what and, peroxide does. Yeah, and, and you know what you said there, Erica, is really very profound because we always talk about our successes. Very seldom do we talk about our failures. So if you listen to someone who is an expert, and if you don't believe them, you can ask them, they'll tell you. If you listen to someone who is an expert, they always talk about successes. They never talk about their failures. In fact, I got this quote off social media just the other day. And I loved it. And it goes kind of like this. I'm going to find it here. It said, beware of people who brag about who they are. A lion will never have to tell you he's a lion. And that's what I see happening sometimes. Is they, they talk about this work. This is my little glitchy thing. This is a little trick that I do. And it might work for them but it's not going to work for everybody consistently. That's why when someone tries to do things and has problems with certain things, I look to see who taught them because that's where you have to go with it. Who gave you that information? Where did that information come from? Ooh, I'm not going down that rabbit trail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Erica, what do you got for the second one? All right. That's second one my notes go oh exothermic technology there's that <laughs> word again yeah there is that word again you know i know when i put color initially on the head most of my clients most of my guests that sit in my chair go oh that's cold mm -hmm. like yeah it's a chemical reaction it's like, sorry i can't keep it in the heater <laughs> like i can't keep right. it in i don't keep it in the fridge i promise Right. But the whole exothermic technology thing, I just know scientifically you're going to be able to explain this much better, but all color is exothermic. It is. It is. Exothermic has, in the last year or two, has been now 
taken out of the normal English vocabulary and now has been used as a point of difference in hair color. And, and I understand why, because back years ago, there was a big difference between a high quality hair color and a mediocre hair color. Today, the, the, the gap is narrowed tremendously. And that is why you have now what I call ingredient poachers, People go in and pick out ingredients to choose them as a point of difference. I mean, the one of the most common ones I love is, is micropigment technology, right? I mean, it sounds so special. Well, it was when it was originally created and developed, but it just so happened that the patent on that lapsed several years ago and so now it made it available for other companies to use micropigment technology. And so you have lots of companies using that as a point of difference. And I think it's great to use the micropigment technology. Don't get me wrong, but don't build it as a point of difference because everybody's using no it. You're not the only one that's using it. So exothermic, I've heard this a lot and exothermic, in our world is when you mix an acid and an alkali. Any of you who were alive and doing perms, when uh, Zotos came out with an exothermic permanent wave, okay, it created heat because you mixed an acid in with your alkaline solution and boom, you got heat. In hair color, we do that as well. We mix an acid with an alkaline you create a reaction. Reactions create energy. Energy is measured in heat. The measurement system that we use in the laboratories is Celsius. So you start off at zero. So the average temperature of a hair color formulation is about seven degrees Celsius. Now you can Google that. What is the Fahrenheit translation for seven degrees Celsius, and you'll find that it's 41 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about the same temperature <laughs> as your refrigerator, which is why the hair color is cold <laughs> to the body temperature, to the person's body temperature. That's why it's cold when it goes on the head. So <clears throat> exothermic's not new. It's just being now used as a point of difference. But what they failed to tell you with that product, which will go unnamed, is that they're using ethanolamine in there because they pride themselves on saying the active alkalizing process is created through the exothermic reaction, which is not true. You can look on their ingredient deck and it has ethanolamine in it, which is a fixed alkali. It's sort of a chemical cousin to ammonia. So stop, stop with all the magic stories. I mean, because I think the story is that the heat gently opens the cuticle as opposed to using ammonia and blasting it open. And ammonia doesn't blast open the cuticle. <laughs> it's like, you know, boom, a bomb. No, it's <laughs> not. <laughs> ammonia will swell the cuticle because it's an alkaline but it doesn't blast the cuticle open. The cuticle imbrications aren't suddenly no longer horizontal. They're now vertical. They're not doing that. <laughs> it just gently swells them so that the color of the dye intermediates can be carried into the hair strand and, and develop in the cortex of the hair. But um, yeah, exothermic is a, all of this stuff is like quinoa protein, milk amino protein, all of these things are great to have them in your product, but you can only have about 5% in the color itself because the colors are alkaline. And any more than 5%, it will be degraded. <clears throat> it will degrade, simple as that. So, you know, why talk about that kind of stuff? Because they need a selling point. Other than that, it's just another non-ammonian hair color. And there's nothing wrong with that. But focus on teaching people how to use hair color 
not on the fact that it makes your product indispensable. Here's what I discovered. And Max, I'm sure you've discovered this. I know you have, Erica. When you teach people the truth, they'll buy whatever you want them to buy. Yeah. How many basketball players do you think wear Michael Jordan tennis shoes because they believe it will make them a better basketball player? Probably hundreds. If you can't jump, you can't jump. It doesn't matter what shoe you're wearing. So for me, teach them how to use color and they'll buy your product because you taught them how to use color. Here's what I, I learned. It's what my mentor taught me. He said, help people solve a problem, help them save time or help them create extra revenue in their business They'll buy whatever you have. Whoa. Sorry. Yeah, guys. that oh, was one heck of a rabbit trail, Dennis. Uh, Max, <laughs> do you have anything to add to that? <laughs> I mean, that was pretty intense. Yeah, he covered most <laughs> yeah. of it. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm sorry, you guys. You guys have to control me because it just sometimes, I just, I'm so passionate about what we do and about helping people be successful and more successful in this business that it just you know sometimes I, I just it just I can't fathom the idea of someone coming along and giving them information that's totally misleading and I, I'm not saying that people are evil I'm just saying that if you don't know go learn I mean, you know, you guys see me when I post on Instagram, right? It's L-W-Y-D-K. L-W-Y-D-K. Learn what you don't know. That's a hashtag I use because when you learn what you don't know, you now become more informed. You can now be more successful. Very, very important. All right. So, uh that was from you, Erica, right? Excellent. That was from me. Mm -hmm. All right, Max, look. Give me your second one, brother. All right. Saving the best for last. Let's talk about acid demi permanent hair color. <laughs> and that it's actually not a thing. <laughs> it's, it's, not a, it's actually not a thing. You're absolutely I'm still right. coming out of rehab on this, too. <laughs> you're, Let me you're tell you. You're a lot of people right now. <laughs> Probably tune, tune in so the Matt, hate mail. Can you yeah. share what you what you did? Because I think, look, all of you watching, you have to understand that the Max and I have a lot of very similar backgrounds. Uh, Max was involved corporately in a lot of things, and so his belief system, a lot of his belief system, were formed by people, my colleagues from my generation, that were very influential people and are still in our industry. So when, when Max and I first had our first interaction together, I am sure he probably said, okay, well, it kind of makes sense, but I'm not sure this guy's really, he might be blowing smoke. He might not be real. And so what I appreciate about this man is that he went through and he said, okay, I'm going to see if this really is what he's saying. So Max, kind of share with them what you discovered. Um. I think the, so the way I sort of went down this whole rabbit hole with you in, in, in the beginning um, was I was in a class with you and you basically told me that all dyes have to be suspended in an alkaline environment in the tube or the bottle. Yes. And, and I was like, well, what about, what about acid color? You know, because I had had this concept right. my entire career, you know, that, you know, acidic color for the lengths and ends, it's better for the hair, it's yada, yada. We all know the, the selling points. And you right. were like, you were just like, test the pH. And I was like, that's a great idea. I'm going to test the pH. And then so I went and got several different brands mm -hmm. of acidic demi 
Mm -hmm. And I tested the pH of all of them. And I was shook because one of them, you know, and this is before you mix it with developers. So this is just straight product out of the the tube or the bottle. One was like 10 point something. (laughs) One, one rolled in at nine point, we'll say five, uh, a couple, couple at the 8.5. I found literally one brand and I tested probably at least 10 different ones just to be fair. One brand came in at 7.2. Yeah. Which close. Is still alkaline. Yeah, close, yeah. but no cigar. Like horseshoes. <laughs> it's like so, horseshoes. So it's like close. horseshoes and, and grenades. <laughs> so I really I you know now I kind of if I hear that acid demi it's like mm. okay well you gotta you gotta test it to know kind of thing right. and it's it, it doesn't mean that I I stopped using it or anything like that I still you just know what love, you're working with yeah I love it I love it as a tool but there are times that I'm gonna pick you know like I carry multiple brands of color in right. my salon anyway I might pick one demi over another, depending on the state of the hair that I'm working with. Absolutely, sure. You know? But it, it just, I felt, I definitely feel more empowered knowing this. Right. And again, it just stripped off another level of the kind of like marketing stuff that was, you know, fed, fed right. to me by a manufacturer. And of course, like I, I love products. I love hair color. I want right. to believe, I want to believe that you know, the next big thing is going to be the next big thing. Right. You know? Yeah. Well, Until what, I Google the ingredient deck. Yeah. Here's what I admire about you is that you own that information, Max. I don't. You know, I, 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 you don't own something. I did not play a role. I did not play a major role in forming your opinion. I just said, test it. And so now you own that information. So when you talk about it, you talk about it from confidence and it's not to, to, you know, degrade or, you know, play down those, those products. It's just, just know what you're working with. I mean, it's like, you know, we could sit here and, and tell people stuff that's really happening that they may not even realize. Like if you're using a demi permanent color on the hair, you are creating some sort of lightning action in the hair. You are. You won't see it because it's minimal. Remember, the only way we have to measure the success of a chemical service is by what we see and how it feels. But I'm telling you, the only way that you could get (laughs) a demi color to work in the hair would be to change the structure of that hair slightly, ever so slightly, you know, I mean, it's like Shade GQ. Shade GQ never processed at a 6.9 pH. But that's what they sold it as. It was actually processing at 7, 7.1. And now with Shade's cream for extra coverage, mm-hmm. <laughs> there's only one way they can get extra coverage. Increase not the alpha. Yeah. You know? And well, not... Reason- that shades cover plus they tell you you can use 10 or 20 volume with yeah well so, that, yeah hello yeah. so you know th- and there's nothing wrong with that if it's giving you what you're looking for but don't in your mind think of it as being in that category of something that's 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 going to leave the hair not going to damage the hair at all right damage is not a bad word i mean really what we're doing is we're affecting the structure you know, that gets rid of the damage word, if you want, if you want to say that. Uh, but it's like, we think that at seven, we say neutral, and seven is really not neutral. Seven is really just the balance point on the pH scale. That's all. Because, you know, to really get to where the hair is in a relatively great condition, you've got to get to 4.5 or 5.5, mm-hmm. which is like, you know, a hundred times going towards the acid side, you know, to bring that hair down. But uh, yeah, those things don't exist. Even though we, we call them that they don't exist. Don't believe me. Don't believe Max. Don't believe Erica. Test it yourself. 
let us know what you think. Yeah, I yep. actually, um, I have a longtime friend in the industry that back when I was a receptionist, so I've known him a long time. He started working for a company, came in and, you know, talking to me about the color line. And mind you, I, I work with a color line, so I use that color line, but we do not have a demi-permanent color. So I had asked him, hey, what do you have that's a demi-permanent? He was like, oh, do you mean like acidic color? And I go, no, I want a demi-permanent. He was like, well, I live in the world of acidic and alkaline. I was like, okay, what is the pH of your color then? He said, I live in acidic and alkaline. I said, what is the pH of your color? He's all 6.9. Okay, I'll take this, 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 this. And a developer. Of course, I went home and tested it. Guess what? <laughs> the pH of it is 8.5. Oh, yeah. no, 8.25, something like that. I, right. right around there. Yeah. But I tested it, and then I went live, and then I told him because he was on my live. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Yeah, there's so much that we, we believe, but it's not really real. So, guys, <laughs> look, we have been running here for a while. I think we're right at the end of our game. Listen, it has been so much fun with you two. Uh, we had lots of stuff to talk about, and uh, it's, it's been really, really great fun. Have you guys had fun today? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. Good time. Well, Max, as always, I love having you on the show uh, and being part of this show because, you know, you bring a great, great, Cons a great perception to the table and Eric I'm so excited that you were part of it today we'll have to have you back again for sure thanks so for having me guys great so listen if you like what you're seeing you can subscribe to our YouTube channel right here underneath us uh, we would love that and we are so happy that our, our channel is growing thank you so much for uh, telling people about us and sharing what we have to share with you. You can reach us on Instagram as well. You can find Max at Max M Hair. You can find me at Real Captain Color. And Erica, what is your IG? My IG handle is just Erica Blancet. As it. Erica yeah. Blancet. Okay, so uh, you guys watch for that, and then we invite you to come to our website www.gurunation.net and uh, check out our educational page. Uh, we have live on online classes in our virtual classroom. We also have pre-recorded webinars that you can download and watch. And uh, if you find this beneficial, please share it with your friends. Uh, our whole goal is to help you become more successful. Um, as I say always, we want to help you become the master of your hair color services. We want to help you discover your own personal genius that each and every one of you have inside of you. And hopefully this information is going to help you do that. And it possibly has provoked your thought process. Um, like we always say, we're not here to contradict what you've been taught or contra be contrasting to your belief system, but we are here to provoke your thought process. So, uh, Reflect on this and then let us know. If it means a lot to you, send us a message. Let us know how we're doing. What can we do for you that'll make this program more exciting and more fun? So, you guys, uh-oh, uh-oh, there's what? our ride. There's our ride. <laughs> I'll meet you guys in the clearing. And uh, All right. until we see you again, from my heart to yours, I am Captain Color. I am out of here. Erica, thank you, dear. Thank Thanks, you, man. Guys. Take care, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.